Kevin Keats is from round the way. That means he's leaving with something. We're going to talk the upset of Duke and more on today's episode of Locked on Wolfpack. Let's go. You are Locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, folks. On today's episode of Locked On Wolfpack, we have to get into the 74-69 upset of the second-seeded Duke Blue Devils in the ACC tournament. That, to my left, is Grayson Boone, and I am Kenton Gibbs, former Wolfpack defensive tackle. I know y'all are used to Grayson doing this, but he's having his flu game right now. He's a little under the weather so I'm doing my best Scotty Pippen impression to carry him all the way. Or we could say he's not doing his best DJ Horn impression because both of them are playing phenomenally through the pain. Grayson, give me some of your takeaways from this upset. What a win. And, yes, I, I do sound a bit ridiculous, so I apologize for my raspy voice uh, throughout the entirety of this episode. But NC State, we talked about just fighting for one more day. These seniors just playing for each other. This team playing for each other. They found a way to get it done again, again, and you beat Duke, the second seeded team in the ACC, a top 10 team in the country. You talk about a team getting hot at the right time and feeling dangerous. The NC State Wolfpack are now officially stamp marked it dangerous. They are a dangerous team. They got to play Virginia in the semifinals. They feel like they could beat anyone right now. What a win. What a win. Yeah. And the most interesting thing I find about this situation, we come into this with me saying the Wolfpack should be on upset alert against Louisville. We come into this after the first half against Louisville saying, Kenny Payne putting us out of our misery. How poetic. We go out of this at this moment saying, we got to, not only did we get a win, we got one of those, what's, what's the, is it not a quad four, not a quad three, not a that's that old elusive quad one that Coach Keats has been finding his behind, getting belt put to it time and time again, and yet these guys made it happen. I'm I'm looking at this game, and, you know, I, I'm just going to say this, okay? Wolfpack fans, if you didn't watch the first three games, if you didn't, you know, if you weren't doing any of that, don't nobody move. Nobody do anything. It's only superstitious if it doesn't work. We're sticking with this thing, okay? All the Wolfpack fans that are in D.C., you stay your tail in D.C. You don't leave Chocolate City until we come back with a trophy. Don't you do it. But, Grayson, which players' performances stood out to you today? Which players are you looking at and saying, this was going to take a Herculean effort, and this guy was the guy to get it done? You cannot look in any other direction than Ramadan Modiara. Playing yeah. three consecutive games during your observation of Ramadan, which yeah. includes not eating or drinking anything from sunup to sundown and putting together three of your most impressive performances of the season is yeah. incredible. Incredible. I fundamentally don't understand how he's able to function on the court after not eating or drinking for one game. Try doing that for three in a row. And the third one, you have to deal with Kyle Filipowski and Mark Mitchell in the paint all night. Cooked him. Cooked him. He, he cooked him. Ramadan Mo is perhaps the greatest NC State basketball player of all time. I say that in jest, but he is he's on another level right now. Tonight he had, what, 14 points, 16 boards, a couple steals, a couple blocks, and did all of this on one empty stomach. What a heroic effort from Mo Diara in this game. Absolutely dominated Duke down low. I'll tell you what, it makes sense that that he did all this because you talk about not being able to eat from sun up to sundown. Well, he was feasting on the court, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. The young man said, feed me, Blue Devil. We'll make an exception for this one. Feed me, Blue Devil. Because, man, what a time, what a game. And, and the guy that I look at in this game and I say, hey, 
this was a, a game that I might not have saw coming, or this is a moment where we needed multiple guys to step up, multiple guys to be the guy, and you were one of those guys, I got to say it. Mr. Michael O'Connell coming back again, doing his thing again, running the show as the point again, and doing something special here. 12 points, four assists, two rebounds, but here's the special part. Five of seven from the field, two of two from deep. Hold on. Hold on. A team that you and I talked about all year. The, the shooting is suspect. The shooting is suspect. They can't throw a rock in the ocean. They can't hit a super Walmart from the parking lot. All of a sudden, 7 of 16 from deep in this game. Hold on now. 43.8% in the tourney. That'll do. That'll do. Hey, hey. And you know what, what I find to be most interesting about this game? You and I talked about how game in and game out, the, the free throw discrepancy being massive is what got NC State over the hump. The free throw gap in this one did favor NC State, but it was 20 to 14. Like, that's it. We missed quite a few of them. I was about to say, here's the craziest part. We shot 55% from the line. So it's not even like we killed them from the line. When you look at the final result of this thing, we only made three more uh, free throws than they did. I'll tell you what, this NC State team, I, I don't know what this is. I don't know how this team is is showing up in this way. But, you know, you called it, Grayson. The, the seniors showing up. I mean, with double digits from DJ Burns, double digits from Casey Morsef, the seniors are showing up and showing out. Any final thoughts? I've seen the sentiment passed around on Twitter, and we even talked about it yesterday on our show, in that last time we saw Duke, John Shire made the conceded effort to have Burns kind of get away with whatever, but none of NC State guards would make a difference in that game. It seems like Keats adopted that philosophy and then used it against Shire in this game because only Filipowski and Mark Mitchell did much of anything for Duke because their three guards did you know relatively nothing. You kept Jared McCain at bay. Jeremy Roach did virtually nothing. If I'm not mistaken, he finished with like five points. Tyrese Proctor was pretty inefficient. So using using Duke's strategy back on them and it working, I think is very funny. I think Keith should get credit for that. It's just a fantastic win. Five guys in double figures. Again, talked about it yesterday. They're having fun. They're playing loose. And it's, it is such a joy all of a sudden to see this team play for three consecutive nights. Going to make it four here on Friday. They got to play Virginia. That's a team that we beat in Raleigh. Probably should have beat the second time in Charlottesville, but let that one get away. I'm expecting a very close game against Virginia on Friday night. You know, it's it's going to be a rock fight. We know how these things go against Absolutely. UVA. The, uh, the whistle might be a little suspect uh, with UVA. We know how that goes as well, but Another day. They they live another day. And echoing what we talked about yesterday, I'm just so proud of these guys, man. They they yeah. are so locked in for each other right now, playing for each other. And as an NC State basketball fan, that is all you can ask. All the outside noise, we've talked about it at nauseum. Just enjoy this for what it is. Just enjoy yeah. the ride. What a spectacular win over Duke. Hoping for more of the same against UVA. And then after that, I don't know, man. You might see the Dirty Foot Club in the ship. So, who knows how this thing will play out? We'd be remiss if we didn't mention NC State's leading scorer, Mr. DJ Horn. Oh, he, yeah. he, like my like my counterpart here, like my porcelain prince, Grayson Boone here, playing through some pain, playing through some adversity, playing through a little bit of hurt, playing through a little bit of, you sure you want to do this today? Because when I heard Grayson, when he gave me the call, I said, you sure you need to be on this episode? I can, I can carry it by myself. He said, I wouldn't miss covering this game for the world. <laughs> and and here we are. Same thing with DJ Horn and what he did. DJ Horn goes out there and does not just show up. He's not just, well, I'm hurt, so I don't expect nothing much from me. He said, I may be a little hobbled. I may be a little gimp, but those boys ain't going to know it. You're not going to be able to tell the way I take it left or right. You're not going to be able to tell the way I pull up. You're not going to be able to tell the way that I'm leading the break. And, you know, that type of effort, you know, I, I joke a lot about how Kyle Filipowski led Duke to beat uh, Louisville because he was allegedly suffering from a high ankle sprain after the court storming and 
play a day later. But this very seriously is that feel for DJ Moore. You oh, yeah. are watching him give one of the gutsiest performances. And I'm not going to say in NC State history, but I'll say in recent NC State history, when's the last time in one of the big three in terms of football, basketball, baseball, that we saw a guy come out and we know he's not 100%, but not only does he show up, he shows up. When's the last time we saw him, man? My brain immediately goes to Armstrong and the performance he put up against UNC with damaged ribs. Yeah, yeah. And that, and you know what? I'll tell you this much. Beating the Dirty Foot Club, always high stakes. Always high stakes. Man, shout out to, shout out to uh, DJ Horn for showing up in the way he had. And shout out to Keats for having these guys win it because as much as we – Keats was much maligned and rightfully so coming into this tournament, he's got these boys fighting. He's got these boys playing. He's making the adjustments that need to be made when they need to be made to put us in position – to win ball games. So, you know, that's that's all you can really ask for. Grace is going to pay some bills, and then we're going to get right back into this thing. Our first sponsor of the day is Robin Hood Retirement. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on a 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started on Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC is a registered broker dealer. Our second sponsor today is Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experience with smart TVs, as well as a Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV. Whether it's the opening weekend for MLB or the NCAA college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Trust us on this. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well for all of you chefs out there. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Amazon Fire TV channels, well, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash TV. Middle portion of our Friday show. Now time for Fan Friday. Without further ado, let's get into it. First one here comes from John Labus. He says, four times in a row, I refuse to let myself be hopeful. John, we feel you, man. We feel you. NC State fans, we really don't know what to do with this current ACC tournament run, but here's what we all should do. Just enjoy it. Just enjoy it for what it is. We don't have to get our hopes up. I think we should all just keep our expectations at sea level and just enjoy them play their last couple basketball games of this season. It's going well so far. We're 3-0. and We got to play Virginia on Friday night for a chance at the championship of this whole freaking thing, what a ride. I disagree, Grayson. Good. (laughs) Don't get hopeful. Feel the same way you felt coming in. Feel that right now. The same way you thought about this thing coming in, feel that. Bottle that up. Keep it going. Keep it going. Don't mess with the vibes. Don't mess with the vibes at all. The vibes right now are very, I'm worried because Let's be honest. As Wolfpack fans, were you not worried until that final buzzer? Were you not worried until that? Keep the vibes rolling. Keep the vibes rolling. 
Don't you let nobody believe you got it made in the shade. Your job is safe. Now, don't you let them trick you into that. Don't get hopeful. Stay real pessimistic, my friend. Stay pessimistic. (laughs) Next one here comes from Scott Briscoe. Says, I've been a state fan since I was born. As I get older, the more I understand the Cardiac Pack moniker. But that's not the 83 team. That's just our program at this point. So much emotion. Scott, you hit the nail on the head here. Every yeah. single sport at NC State will test your character. They will give you gray hairs long before you are ready for them. Make you go bald early. <laughs> they might even take your hair away from you. You got to understand how I'm saying this, but that is the magic of NC State athletics. I yeah. truly wouldn't have it any other way. And sure, there's other schools in the area. Oh, we have championships and meh, meh, meh. Yeah, whatever, man. It's going to make it so much sweeter when we do get one. All of this angst and all of this waiting and all of this frustration, I promise you, it will be so worth it when we finally put our hands on a trophy. And Regardless of what that trophy may be, maybe it's College World Series, maybe it's CFP, maybe it's an ACC championship, whatever. When we get one, the world is going to know about it. They're going to hear from us. I promise you that. Oh, absolutely. I plan on being more annoying than that OA Celtics team. I plan on being that level of annoying to the rest of the universe for all of eternity. But very seriously, I agree. It's the essence of NC State. What did we say the law of the wolf was? When you expect what, you get the what. When you expect the least, you get the what, Grayson? The most. The most. We came into this tournament thinking to ourselves, if we get past Louisville, cool. But that's about it, right? We're going home after Louisville. We're you know, hey, the boys will get to see the, the Capitol. They'll get to see the Washington Monument. Maybe they go around, see a couple of nice little trinkets or pick up a couple of nice little trinkets here and there. But, you know, and then there's nothing serious happening in here. Next thing you know, this team says we've got not one, we've got not two, but at minimum three wins, one of which being against the school right down the street. In the words of Kanye West, he's done miracles on me. He's done (laughs) miracles on me. Next one comes from Mike Stewart. He says, wanting a show on your take on the future of the ACC and where you see the pack fitting in. Lots of YouTubers weighing in, including Josh Pate and others, most leaving state as the outlier, maybe going to the Big 12. So, yeah, this is an interesting discussion. We've talked about it kind of several different times off and on over the course of the last, I don't know, maybe six six months or so. And every time we do bring this up, it is a very interesting discussion in that the, the landscape is ever so changing. One day we yeah. feel maybe decent about the ACC starting to figure things out in terms of revenue and viewership and, and membership in the ACC. And then the next thing you know, the ACC and Big 12 are going out sad tucking their tail to the SEC and the Big Ten saying, we know we're inferior. You guys can have the pie. We'll just kind of – we'll make do with what we got over here. And then you really don't know what the future might hold. And when when conference realignment was really the hot topic back before football season kicked off in August, in really thinking about all the hypotheticals, I do think that NC State to the Big 12 – probably makes the most sense on paper. By the way, the money would shake out and maybe logistics would shape out. I think that might make the most sense in totality, but it's really hard to gauge how all this will play out. I think an eventual merger between the ACC and the Big 12 probably makes maybe the most sense uh, long-term. We'll see how that kind of works out, but Kenton, what you got on this one? I agree with the last thing you said there. The merger is the way. I don't know why the Big 12 and ACC are dragging their feet on this. You will get left behind. And sure, you can make the argument, well, if we were to split everything up, you know, 30, 30, 30, and then have 10% left for the group of five, you would still see very similar shares because what we have now, in essence, is the the SEC and Big 10 getting 66%, and that would break out to 33% for each of them. And the um, the Big 12 and ACC getting 28%. But do you realize that little 2% bump that just happened from saying, hey, bring it together and work it out that way? Like, that's that's what you're really looking at here, okay? I get it. There are lots of teams that 
both the Big 12 and ACC have taken on aren't going to get huge viewership, aren't going to draw huge numbers. At this point in time, it's about the survival. This thing is not, you know, we, we talk about being the school of survive and advance, but we need to be the conference of survive and advance. Because if you find a way to make that merger happen, you have a, a path forward for at least the, the time being. But if you stay separate and try to work this thing out and, oh, we'll be okay, we'll be fine, these conferences are going to crumble. And when I say crumble, I mean like a, a Nature Valley granola bar that's been in your book bag all day. It's nothing but sawdust is coming out of that packet. And that's that's what's going to be left of these conferences if they continue to try to go it alone, in my opinion. Last one here from Michael Holbrook says, I have a question or topic I would like for you guys to address. Was wondering of all the amazing winter sports at NC State that are having a ton of success this year, which one will perform the best in the national spotlight? I've been pondering this over the last week or so. I think women's basketball could potentially go to the final four. It's time we take Westmore to that next elite level, but I think the wrestling team has the most legitimate shot at making the final four. I'm looking for them to convert those seven ACC titles into NCAA national titles. Baseball is also a contender for great things, potentially run at the college world series. Softball could make the playoffs for the first time ever. So I think you actually answered your own question here, Michael. I think wrestling is probably in the best position to make some noise in, in the in the NCAA wrestling tournament. And when NC State has obviously established themselves as a wrestling powerhouse, and they did just win the ACC championship. I know we didn't mention that on here, but it's not because we didn't see it. So certainly a late congratulations to the wrestling team. But just as strong as any other year, Coach Pop has those boys humming. I think they've really primed themselves to bring home some hardware in a couple weeks. Yeah, for sure. And I, I look at it, I agree that Coach Pop and company are the best bet for now. But I'm going to tell you this. I don't think people realize what Westmore is building with this women's basketball team. This is two straight top 10 recruiting classes. After going in the portal and going absolutely ballistic. The man was moving like Oppenheimer in the portal, if you if you catch my drift. He was absolutely going crazy in terms of getting Sanaya Rivers, a, a player of the year candidate, defensive player of the year uh, t- caliber of player, and getting a, a River Baldwin who, you know, has turned out to be phenomenal, exceeded all expectations, and getting a Mimi Collin, a stretch four like no other, and he, in not just the ACC but the NCAA right now, and you combine that with Zoe Brooks. Oh, man. If Hannah Hidalgo wasn't born, there's no doubt about who the ACC freshman of the year is. You know what I mean? You combine that with a Lacey Steele. I'm telling you right now, that three-point shot is already there. And if we know West more for one thing, it's player development. You come to West with one tool, you leave them with four. He, Lacey has that one. I want to see what he puts in that bag next. I want to know who she becomes. Is she going to be the three and D player? Is she going to be the three point short shooter that turns into a shot creator that can get it every angle, every which way with a little bit of ball moving in there as well. What do we got there? And of course I've, I've talked about this before. We got one of the best shooters in North Carolina coming to NC state. We have multiple top 10 classes back to back. We have a team that was, went to the ACC finals, uh, went to the ACC tournament finals this year. We have a team that had more ranked wins than anybody in the country that's bringing in the top recruiting class. I'm telling you, I I got my own West. I got my own West as the one that's that's going to you know, have the most. If we're talking this year, I agree it's Coach Pop and company. But if we're looking toward the future, West is building a monster over there in Reynolds. If only we could – Get somebody else to go over to Reynolds permanently. Maybe you have a two-headed monster over there. But, you know, I, uh, that's, that's, that's just me thinking out loud. That's just me thinking out loud. We're going to close out our Friday with the newly agreed upon CFP using 14 teams. We haven't even used 12 yet after a quick word from our sponsors. Our third sponsor of the day is FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. 
Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Last couple minutes here on Friday, continuing our discussion from yesterday, the newly agreed upon CFP terms in terms of revenue, the majority of the pie going to the SEC and Big Ten, and the second part of this was the potential agreement that the CFP would expand again to 14 teams, which I find interesting because we haven't even tried out 12 yet. Kenton, 14 teams CFP, good or bad? I say good. I say good because, and and here's my thing. I think the perfect number was 10 when there was a power five and group of five because I thought that every champion, I'm sorry, I thought the perfect number was 12 actually. I thought the perfect number was 12 because you get in every champion plus two at large bids, but the way that they're breaking this down, I mean, I think that's more disappointing than adding in 14 teams because to me, yes, the regular season should matter and all that, but I I don't think that you go wrong by adding more teams into the playoff. I think that I would say that, you know, we 14 is just about enough. Like, and I get it. We're going to hear arguments from team number 12 and 13. Like, oh, we didn't get in because there was an automatic bid. and Nobody wanted to see us. But it's like, hey, shut up, dork. Who cares? Even if NC State is that dork that gets told, excuse me, that gets told to shut up. The sentiment is still the same. Don't care. Don't want to hear. Should have won. You know, cry more. Cope. Don't care. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I certainly see both sides because it it does open the possibility for teams like NC State to have a better shot at making the field. And it would be sick to see NC State play in the CFP. And I do think there's also an element of potential chaos, which makes it fun. You could see you could see an 11 seed Oklahoma State wipe out Georgia in the first round. I mean, just hypothetically speaking here, that that part of that would make that so much more fun to watch just from a, a playoff standpoint. And some of these games are going to be on campus, which I think is spectacular. But then in the same sense, some of these games in the regular season, they are going to lose meaning because you're going to see a team that's 9-3, and three, maybe even 8-4, and four, make it into the CFP. And it's like, I uh, I feel like we're losing the plot here a little bit. So I I get both sides. I think ultimately people will come to accept it once it's out and about for a little while. However, I do think it's pretty interesting that they're already toying with 14 teams. We haven't even played with 12 yet. This is the first season that we're going to see a 12-team CFP. And honestly, I do think it will go extremely well. But maybe let's see how that goes first before you start dipping into 14 because – this feels like, and I saw this analogy on Twitter, this feels like if you give a mouse a cookie. And if you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to want 16 teams. He's going to want 24 teams. Like, where do you draw the line? So I do think 12 is the best number. I think it's going to produce the best results this year and there on out. So I I hope that this gets reconsidered or at least bumped back a little bit. Let's see how 12 does first before we look at 14. That'll do it for us here on Friday. Thank y'all for bearing with my raspy voice. Hopefully this is done and over with by the time Monday rolls back around. NC State faces off with Virginia in the ACC tournament semifinals tonight. We got the late shift, 930. Catch our thoughts on Twitter. If we make it to the ACC championship, that may require a post-game live session. Stay tuned on that. We'll let you know if we do get into that type of thing. Baseball is down in Atlanta. They have a three-game series against Georgia Tech. Keep your eyeballs on that this weekend. And as I mentioned, Selection Sunday for the women's basketball team. They will get their draw, hopefully favorable, fingers crossed. But if it's up the NCAA, you never really know. That'll do it for us here on Friday. Be sure to hit that like button, drop your comments in the comment box, and we will see you all on Monday. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.